Welcome everyone to The Great Debate, where we're going to talk about a somewhat controversial aspect and topic within anime, namely fan service. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, fan service refers to scenes and sequences in anime where um, usually you get to see um, half-naked versions of characters. It is showing showing um, stuff that has nothing to do with the plot, nothing to do with what's going on. It is just there to titillate the viewer, basically. It's titillation. Um, sometimes this term has been used more broadly to refer to anything that is of interest to a fan. So, for example, uh, you might have a show where a motorcycle shows up and they just render that motorcycle in all sorts of detail and you, know, you hear the revving of the engine and that's kind of a fan service for motorcycle fans. That's not what we're talking in this case. Uh, that's a somewhat more too broad definition of it because it really just means something that is meant to appeal to a, um, a particular subset of fans. When I'm talking about fan service, I'm talking about ridiculous, um, you know, unnecessary camera angles pointing at a girl's breast or crotch, you know, or cutting to a bunch of girls in a bathhouse uh, where you get to see them naked all the time. Um, and it's like, that could happen just as easily anywhere else, and it's really clearly just there to titillate. I'm actually watching Gunbuster right now, the OVA from the 90s, and it's been totally fine, and then in episode two, there's a bathhouse scene, and they are just full-scale naked for, you know, probably 45 seconds. Actually, probably longer than that. It's a long scene of, like, these three girls, you know, chatting and you know, standing up and walking around, and it's, you know, okay. Um, OVAs, you can do anything. And it's, it's clear that it is there as an excuse to show these girls naked. So the, the question is, is this, if anime changed this, if anime had less fan service, how might that change the industry and the, the, the fandom? Because here's the thing. One of the problems that I know I have and a lot of my friends and people I know online have, they have a difficult time re recommending anime to other people because there's random nudity like this. There, there's random fan service. And it's not you know, random, but it's pretty random. And it's just hard to know how somebody's going to react to that. It's a very, it's something that doesn't exist really in other fandoms in that way and in other, in other, industries in that way other media so yeah yeah the, the beach episode where the girls are, are, are running around in not just swimsuits but really skimpy swimsuits right and that's the thing um so um so game escape says um i've never understood the controversy about fan service it has always struck me as a part of anime just as the one-off sarcastic joke line is part of Hollywood. Well, that is actually a controversial part of Hollywood. A lot of people dislike that aspect of Hollywood because it's shallow. Um, and because it, it, a lot of Hollywood movies have become structured around the one-off sarcastic joke, where that's how everyone talks, and it's not realistic, and it's not an effective way of getting across the plot. Um, and to be clear, the, the, the thing here is not so much the fact that that people are horrified by fan service, it's that fan service limits the size of the audience. A lot of times we complain about how anime remains this tiny little niche and it never grows. Now it's grown significantly over time, but it, we always, you know, people are all, all, often asking, when will anime become mainstream? The answer to that might be once it tones down the fan service. That could be one of the main limiting factors, because I know a lot of adults who see that stuff and go, nope, you know, that is not, you know, um, not something I'm interested in, right? So that's an, that is, I think, a serious question. And to be clear, as we're kind of getting into this in the chat room, I am not saying anime should have no fan service, and I'm not saying that this should happen tomorrow. I am posing the question, what is fan service doing to fandom? What 
influence is that having? Good, bad, or indifferent? I would argue that fan service is, there are certainly negative impacts of fan service. It is definitely limiting the appeal of, of anime, not just outside of Japan, but within Japan as well. A lot of people in, in I mean, J anime has a rather poor reputation within Japan because of fan service. People think that all anime is just full of fan service, right? And that's the issue. Um, the other point, which somebody made on the, uh, uh, on the Discord this week when we were talking about this, is that fan service is also part of the economic um, strategy of these series. There's certainly no question that when, when staff are planning to make a show like A Sister's All You Need, which we mentioned in the, in the news, um, or some of these other fan service shows, they are putting the fan service in there because that's what a certain segment of their audience wants. That will grab eyeballs. And it's important to know that that is true, right? Sex sells. On the other hand, again, what impact is that having on the industry? Whether it sells or... The fact that it sells doesn't mean it's good. Um, a great example of this would be Hollywood and the Hayes Code. Uh, people don't realize, I've done a bit of research into this, so back in the th late 20s, early 30s, I think, um, Hollywood adopted this, this thing called the Hayes Code, which determined what a Hollywood studio would or would not put in their movies. So it was, you know, you cannot show full frontal nudity, um, you can't have foul language, um, you know, you can't have evil win at the end on a sort of fundamental total level, you know, um, basic concepts of public decency, if you will. We look back on that and kind of roll our eyes. The reason for that is that the movies that were coming out just before the Hayes Code was implemented were going pretty far. And they were showing that there, there was, again, there was a lot of nudity and a lot of, of, titillation and a lot of stuff that was ticking people off and it was upsetting people you know Hollywood did not adopt the Hayes Code just because they thought it was a good idea it was because they were facing a major public backlash about this topic so that is you know an issue is that there can come a point where titillation can um, impact your sales you know, Hollywood moved away from that level of titillation. They were moving in that direction in the 20s, uh, and it's going away. You can, it's, it's actually funny if you go back and look at you know, movies before the Hayes Code, and there's a lot of, you know, pretty etchy stuff in there, right? Um, let's see here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, doo -doo -doo. so, Ciro says, more merch sells, more niche, but the niche spend more money. Maybe. Um, so that's a, that's a subtle economic argument where some niches, you know, niches do spend more money, but that isn't necessarily in aggregate more money than you make to, to the mainstream where you're selling, you know, um, things that, that cost 20% less, but you sell it to a hundred times more people, right? Like that, sometimes it's better to go towards the, the large audience. Sebastian says... Um, is it weird because people complain about anime, but what about female superheroes? What about female superheroes? I, I'm, I'm curious what you mean about that. Um, Liquidus says, when Game of Thrones or other live action popular series does fan service, it's okay. It's not okay, though. People complain about the fan service in, in Game of Thrones. That is a major point of contention. A lot of feminists have written, spilled a lot of ink about Game of Thrones and the amount of, you know, um, female abuse there is in that show. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So are you talking about how female superheroes tend to be drawn with, you know, skin tight outfits and, you know, they'll often have like a, you know, a square cut out right above their breasts and things like that. Is that what we're talking about there? Um, because that is certainly an example of Western fan service. And I would argue it's a great example of where a lot of Americans look at that and they don't read comics because of that. Right. Um, you know, that is a bone of, con and, I mean, 
that is things that is something that a lot of American comic book fans have been wrestling with over the past few years is this question of why do we draw women this way? Um, you know, and, and there are there's a lot of uh, stuff being done. Have you seen what is it the, the Hawkeye Chronicles, uh, the Hawkeye thing, whatever, where somebody would they would draw Hawkeye in the same poses used for female superheroes. So you know, he'd, he'd be doing you know this and all these ridiculous uh, poses because that was kind of uh, you know something people were talking about is that female superheroes are drawn in this titillating way and I think it is controversial, right? Um, so, so Daniel, that's a really interesting point that you have anime with sex appeal where it is clearly a titillating show like Cutie Honey, Agent Aieka, where the titillation is part of the structure of the show and they're kind of making fun of titillation and, you know, that is core to the theme of the show and then they do that with every other show, you know, we'll do that in Sword Art Online and we'll do that in Attack on Titan or whatever, right? Um, well, yes, male superheroes are almost always in skin-tight outfits, but they're not drawn the same way. Um, um, you know, the poses they are put in are not the same poses as female superheroes are put in. Um, and the camera does not linger on their crotches the way it lingers on the crotches uh, or the breasts of female superheroes, right? Well, so, Siros, you say the female form is better looking when in those poses. That is a male gaze point of view. That is precisely what the male gaze means that men like looking at breasts, so we must, you know, give in to that desire. I don't agree with that sort of logic. You know, whether or not, you know, the female pose looks that way, that is not what comics are there for. The comic, a comic does not exist to showcase the female form. That is what, you know, fine art is for. Or a comic about the female form, right? But when... Male superheroes are drawn in one way that does not emphasize their sexual characteristics. But female characters are constantly drawn in ways that, represent, that reference their, their sexual characteristics. That's weird, right? Um, that's not cool. And it takes back to anime. The same thing happens in anime. Um, it was Super Robot Wars did a hilarious thing in this where um, for their... They did a beach episode... And all the characters are wearing outfits, and like the guys are wearing, you know, speedos and um, um, or other, you know, more or less skin tight outfits. Some of them are, are like uh, are um, trunks, but they're sort of skin tight trunks and heavily muscled. And they basically did as much fan service for the male characters as for the female characters. A lot more female characters, so you know, screen time was different. Um, and like for the end credits, like final image. They would show one episode, you know, the girls, girls, girls. And then one episode, the guys, like, drawn just as hot. And fans screamed and yelled about that. How dare you draw male characters looking sexy? Um, that's not what I want to I watch. Well, it kind of, it should go both ways, right? Like, if you're okay with female fan service, you, what it, why is there a problem with male fan service? Um, and that's kind of the point, is that, you know, that is the issue. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 Yeah, kill a kill. Very, you know, very much about exploiting the, you know, the attractiveness of the female body. Um, do, 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 do. Well, I mean, but, but, uh, so, the argument that men and women are, are drawn the same, are, 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 mm -mm. um, getting back to that point, Yes, female and male superheroes are both idealized in terms of their, their physical form. But if you flip through comic books and you watch how they are drawn and you watch where the camera is pointed at those characters, female characters is very different from the male characters. That's the problem. It's not the, you know, the, their proportions. It is how they are drawn. Same thing with anime, Right is that you can have female characters in skimpy outfits all the time, but you can put a guy in a Speedo and people freak out. That's why we call what we call a, uh, a, a thing. Um, well, and it, again, Fisher, I'm not arguing that we get rid of fan service. That, that's, that, that's not the argument I'm making. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Right, as Raven says, you don't need fan service to lighten the mood. There are lots of ways of lightening the mood. Um, and again, we're not saying no fan service ever. We're saying, you know, the level is up here. Other mediums are down here. <laughs> why, why is there this strange difference in anime? And what was that, that issue, right? Um, you know, what, what is that point? Um, why are we doing that? Now, um, Gamescape is asking about exploitation, real world versus um, non-real world, right? So there's this argument that you can exploit female, you know, fictional characters because they're not real characters. The problem is real people look at those characters. You know, if those characters never interact with the real world, if nobody in the real world ever actually saw those characters, okay, then I guess you have a point. But because those characters, because those fictional characters have an impact on the real world, that's why this is not simply an academic question. You know, um, girls grow up, real girls grow up in environments where, uh, that encourage them to show off as much skin as possible. Because th those are the, the girls that they see in their, you know, uh, in their environment, real and fictional. Um, there's this really interesting thing about the bikini and how um, essentially male, um, throughout the 20th century, women weren't really pushing the idea of wearing less and less clothing or less and less covering to the beach and to the, you know, to the pool. They weren't really interested in wearing really skimpy outfits, but men were interested in doing that. So they very much, very heavily advertised the idea of skimpy outfits, and that's what everyone saw. That's what was in all the magazines. So that is that became the new normal. That's the worry, is that when this is what you see, that becomes normal, right? Um, and here you bring up a really good point. One of the one of the other issues with fan service is it often deals with mid to young teenage girls, right, and showing off adolescent girls' bodies. Uh, that is also something that is an effect, right? Um, I totally agree, Game Escape, that focusing on female beauty is not in and of itself exploitative. This is not focusing on female beauty, right? There are many, many, many works of art that focus on female beauty and that don't look anything like anime fan service, <laughs> right? We've all seen that, right? We, we've all seen the difference between that stuff. Um, yeah, boob physics. And boob physics, boob physics, I think, is a fantastic example of this. I'm watching Gunbuster, which is kind of, which invented boob physics. Um, and what's interesting in Gunbuster is that that is used as almost an, um, a visual joke, where when you see it, um, you know, it's not that every character's boobs are bouncing all the time. They just use it maybe once an episode, and you look at it and you kind of laugh. And it is there as a, a spice, as a, um, um, something that isn't in your face, if you will. And that's a big difference from how it's used in a lot of modern anime and in sort of traditional fan service, right? Um, you've seen few anime, the top live action th things like Caligula, you have not been looking hard enough. <laughs> I've seen lots of anime where Caligula is tame. Um, you know, obviously pornographic anime, but that's, that's certainly there. Um, so boob phys phys physics are a great example where that can be really abused or it can be an occasional, you know, light joke, if you will, about that stuff. Um, um, you know, what I've seen so far of the boob physics in Gunbuster is, I would say, appropriate to the medium where they're not drawing attention to the fact the characters have giant boobs. In fact, it is the character with sort of a modest breast that does the boob physics in this case. Um, okay, so Quidditch brings up a really good point. Culture. That, you know, are we arguing that about our cultural expectations versus Japan's? Because Japan apparently doesn't have a problem with that. Um, th there is certainly something to be said for that. On the other hand, again, we have a lot of evidence that Japanese media portrays this negatively. That, you know, there are news reports and and discussion panels in Japan about how inappropriate fan service is, especially for 
you know, mid to young teenage girls. So I think, again, there is there, um, there is something to saying that this is a cultural difference, um, but it's not entirely that. There, there's a little bit more to it. Um, you know, that other culture is also not totally cool with it. Um, and the other point about that, actually, which is really important, is the, the fact, the, the, the very different um, approach Japan has towards jokes and towards humor, where you can make fun of things that we would find very creepy. Um, you know, th 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 there's this idea that you can have comedy about things that would really gross us out. And there, there are a few taboo topics in American comedy, even though we don't think that. But there are some, and Japanese comedy is more willing to go there, if you will, um, which is weird. Um, so that's a great point, Cephalopod. And it's one of the reasons why I'm trying to say, you know, I'm not saying get rid of fan service. I'm not saying that fan service is a terrible thing. I'm saying that fan service may have negative effects that we are ignoring by saying, oh, well, it's just, you know, cute girls um, or sexy things, right? Um, and, and, and that is that is the thing, is that, you know, straight guys finding naked girls sexy and wanting to watch more naked girls is totally natural and understandable. Nobody's saying there's anything wrong with that, right? I totally understand. Yeah, incestuous romance is something that apparently they make jokes about in Japan, and that's, that seems to be fine. Um... So that is the thing. Um, yeah, and Sebastian, you're, you're absolutely right. Culture changes over time. It, was, it seemed to be fine in 80s horror movies to show teenagers bonking, you know, constantly in these horror movies. On the other hand, in those movies, those teenagers died at the hands of the axe murderer. So, you know, that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Um, would you say that Elf and Lead has fan service or is the ne nudity necessary? I have not seen Elf and Lead. I've just seen AMVs and trailers and clips. Um, but from what I've seen, yes, that is fan service. They do not need to be nude for those sequences. That is shock value, right? That is titillation. You know, you can, you know, plot-wise, you can say, okay, well, they were, they were locked away and, you know, they wouldn't necessarily have had clothes or whatever, but you could absolutely put a lab coat on them, right? Or, you know, a, um, not a lab coat, but like a, um, an outfit, whatever. That's kind of, you know, you kind of wonder, well, do they really have to be naked? Like, even in that context, it seems kind of weird. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. So, Game Escape says, is fan service anime's way of commodifying the, he the female form? I think yes. I think it is one of the ways that it, it, it commodifies, um, girls right and then the female form i think you're absolutely right um interesting i didn't know that that was there's sort of a fetish thing there with elf and lead that makes sense um now a good example of this for example uh sort of a counter example is the recent uh hbo miniseries westworld where when the androids are brought in for servicing um they're always serviced naked as a corporate policy so that the, the engineers working on them do not see them as human. So there's a lot of male and female nudity in Westworld, but that is, that is central to the theme of that show. And you could argue that maybe there are a few more scenes of that than necessary, but I would absolutely um, argue that that is um, purposeful nudity. Also importantly, the camera, again, doesn't linger. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's not sexualizing these characters. They're just standing there or laying there, you know, just, you know, just, and when I say laying there, just like laying there normally while somebody is, you know, taking things out and putting things in. Um, so you can certainly have nudity. You can certainly have very pretty characters, uh, who are nude as long as there's a reason for that. Um, there's action anime, uh, my dear Marie, I think I, do I still have the VHS of that? No, I think I, I have recorded that. Um, which is about a, a guy builds an android, and there are one or two shots of her laying, you know, partially clothed on an operating table uh, because she's an android. And it's like, you know, while you're building her up and putting her skin on and so forth, she's, you know, you're going to see her breast now and then. Um, and clearly it is there so that you can get in a shot of a breast, but it doesn't feel exploitative in the way that 
you know, a lot of anime can be. Okay. Um, so that, that is, that is issue. That is an issue. Right. There, there's a difference between nudity for the sake of character, plot story, and nudity for sexualization. And there's also a difference between nudity that is sexualized and nudity that is, um, um, titillating. Right. Um, one of the things I want to make clear here is that you can actually absolutely have sexuality and nudity dealing with sexuality in a series without being titillating, without it being fan service in that sense, where, yes, pretty girl, yes, nude, um, yes, maybe arousing, but it is part of the story that that is happening, right? Um... And, you know, you because part of the problem here is that a lot of times folks demonize fan service and at the same kind, time kind of demonize the female body and demonize sexuality in anime. And I do not want to do that. I think anime can absolutely deal with with sexuality and with the occasional nudity that comes with sexuality. You know, imagine that um, without fan service in the way we're talking about it, right? Without just ridiculous stuff. Um, so Sebastian says, if I'm going into a harem show expecting fan service, um, oh, if I'm going into a harem, a harem show, I expect fan service. What's annoying is the out of place fan service. Right, and that gets, gets to different, part, different kinds of fan service, right? If you're doing a harem show where the fan service is the character occasionally falling on top of a girl, you know, in grabbing her breast or whatever, that's very different fan service than constant shower scenes, where it's like, that really doesn't make any sense, but that scene of the two of them tangling up can tell you something about their character, right? Um, yeah, you know, sexualization and sexuality are two, can be two very different things, right? Um, yeah, Russ, uh, Spice and Wolf is a great example of that point, where... Uh, Holo is frequently nude because she is a goddess and that is her her natural human form. She understands why humans have this you know this this nudity taboo, but she is very comfortable in private going around naked and it is not sexualized. It is not you know done as over the top fan service. You could argue that the reason they wrote that into the show is for excuses to show the character naked, right? But that is a that is a more subtle version of what we're talking about. That, that is not the over-the-top fan service. Is that over-the-top fan service that I kind of, I, I, I think is a problem. And that's a great example of where if you were recommending Spice and Wolf to somebody, you can say, now look, the girl is a goddess and she doesn't really have a, the concept of a nudity taboo, um, but like it's not, you know, it's not creepy. She just, you know, walks around in the buff occasionally. Somebody, you know, a reasonable adult will understand that and are not going to get, you know, freaked out about it. It is, so this 13-year-old girl um, is shown taking a bath for like two minutes, <laughs> right? That's kind of worrying. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. Um, so yeah, I think fan service is, it, it's complicated, obviously. There's a lot to... To unpack and to 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 concern about, um, there's a lot of of like so many things. This gets down to feelings, to emotions, to to subjective things, right? Uh, and you're absolutely right, Fisher. You can absolutely have the opposite for for boys. There are certainly boys love and yaoi stuff that absolutely sexualizes and does fan service for male characters. So I'm, I'm not saying this is an only female thing, right? Totally, totally understandable. Um, so yeah, I think th that is a pretty good place to, to put that on hold. Um, I'm sure there's more to talk about uh, on this, but I want to thank you all very much for joining me for this great debate. Uh, this has been very helpful for me at least and hopefully helpful for you to unpack some ideas here. Again, disclaimers, I think this is a video that's going to need disclaimers, and I'm sure I'm going to get some comments from people who are, oh, how dare you? Um, I am not saying that fan service should be killed. I am not saying that um, female nudity is horrible. Um, but fan service might not, fan service at its current levels 
might not be the best thing for the industry overall. Something to think about. We'll see.